In this video we're gonna create the installation script in Bash, so CMD script, for installing Mozilla Firefox with an exe file installer. And this video is probably gonna be one of the longer, so hang on here, let's start. So let's start to download the installation file. So I will open a browser and then search for download Mozilla Firefox and we'll click here and if we click download this one we're gonna get the mini installer which is a uh, pretty uh, which is very small it was uh, not even one megabyte who will then download we want the full installer so we can go here to let's see if we want to see here download in another language or for another operating system let's click here there are several ways to get this file this is one way so we definitely want Firefox, we want, don't want any beta or anything, we want the full version, the stable one. We want 64-bit one and we don't want the MSI, which is actually just a wrapper of the exe file for um, Mozilla Firefox. So we, let's take the 64-bit one here. In this case, let's take US English. So this looks good. So let's start to download. And with my connection, who is not that fast, that's going to take a while. So it starts to download. It's about 53 megabytes and it will take two minutes. While that's downloading to my download folder, let's create the source folder. And in previous videos, we created a template. Let's start to use that now. So I will open a Windows um, Explorer with the Windows E button. And I will go to the root of the C into Intune and Template. And here we have our template. So I will right click here and choose copy and then I will go up one step and let's paste it here I will do that with a control V so here is our uh, template folder with our output and source folder who are empty at the moment but we're gonna fill that so let's rename this one I do that by pressing F2 and manufacturer that will be Mozilla and software that's Firefox M version we can see here it's 90.0.2 let's put that instead of these X's here 90.0.2 and we keep X64 because it's a 64-bit installer we chose that which we can see here so now we have the source folder the template now in the source folder which is empty here we're gonna put with scripts config files and the installer which we're downloading and then we're gonna open the folder so great I don't like to open the file because that's probably gonna run it so I click on here just to show in folder and here we have our exe file so I'm gonna I cut it you can copy it but I prefer to cut it I don't want to have more and then let's go back to our source folder so under underscore intune mozilla firefox 90.02 0 0.2 and 64-bit source let's put it here i will right click and paste i could do a control v as well so here we have the installation files now let's do a script and we want a silent script in cmd that install we will in another uh, video series we will use an msi and installer and also powershell but in this one is a cmd and an x installer so i will start my notepad plus uh, plus you can use uh, visual studio or um, atom or whatever you prefer or notepad and let's start by adding some uh, metadata here let's see i'll zoom in control mouse wheel up okay let's do that zoom in a bit is that actually zoomed in? I'm feeling it did the opposite, made it smaller. Yes, it did. Okay, sorry. Here, it should be big enough. So to do a comment to just for your future self or for others to look at it, we can put rem and then we can put the purpose of this, which is install Mozilla Firefox with the settings. And the settings we come to after, let's focus on just installing Firefox. Then we can add author and I put myself here and rem date. And today it is the 9th August um, 
2021. So of course you will have another version of Mozilla Firefox if you do this at a later date. And let's call it 64-bit also. In something wrong there, right? Install there. And we can call that the purpose. So the purpose, the author, and this is optional. The script won't read the rem. It's like nothing is there. That's for us. And then we can do another rem, install Firefox. So on the line under, here comes the actual, uh, uh, the actual installation command. And to know what to install, we know we will use the install file. So we can already take that. I will do a fake rename F2 and then do control A to copy the full name and copy that. So we know we're going to run this file, but if we just run it like this, it won't work at all for many reasons. We need some switches to make it silent. So let's look um, on the web what the install switches are. So I have that favorite here. And I will add this link in the description of this video also. So we want to run it silent. Perfect. We already have forward slash s here. Let's copy this directly. That's silent installation. And when you deploy software in Intune, you want it to be silent. So after exe, we add forward slash capital S. That's going to make it silent. Let's look if we want something more. Then we can install it to another pad. No, we like program files. Uh, task bar short shortcut, why not? I'm not a big fan of desktop shortcut. The reason is because that gets installed under C uh, the public user, which means on the desktop. So everyone see the shortcut, but if you're not local admin, you can't remove it. So I usually get um, support calls that people don't like it. So let's remove that one. So I copy full here, but we're going to have to do some modification and I paste that after. So forward slash S for silent, forward, forward slash desktop shortcut equals, well, here we have to choose one. I want that to be false because I don't want to see it. If you want the shortcut, you don't have to do anything because by default it is true, but I don't want it. Then let's go back and see some more switches. Start menu shortcut. That's fine. We can have it there. Uh, prevent reboot required. I don't want it to reboot because since we install it silent, if it for some reason needs to restart, we definitely don't want that because the user who get it will be very surprised because they won't see anything. They will just see the restart. So we do the same here. We paste and prevent reboot required. We put that to true this time here. We, we actually want to prevent it. So now we start to have a pretty nice installation um, script here. However, since um, uh, in CMD, when it run, it's going to take space as a separator and then think next one is an argument. So it will actually try to run Firefox as a file and then take setup as an argument. So in order to evade that, we can put a quotation. Here, now it's going to try to run the whole file and then take forward slash s as an argument. I mean, it also needs the path to find this. So we could put c colon backslash and then do in tune and do the path where this file is. But it will only work on this specific uh, computer if this file rest stays here. We want it to look where the package is. And here comes a bit of uh, magic in CMD. We can do... Um, percentage and tilde and I actually have a French keyboard on a boot camp so I, I don't even know how to do the tilde so I will uh, google that uh, character you probably have that on your keyboard so um, uh, how do I do tilde character mm, like that see if I see it so I want this one here if I steal it here control C and then I'm going to reuse that. So here, percentage tilde DPO zero. This might look a bit uh, strange, and I agree, but this is an extremely useful command if you're using uh, CMD scripting. What this is, it will replace this percent tilde DPO zero with the location. So if we save this script in the source folder, which we're going to do, it's going to replace this percentage tilde dpo zero with where the script's running. 
So if the exe file and the script is in the same location, this path is always going to give the location to the exe file, which we want. If we had created a underscore files folder here and we kept the script here and the installer in the files folder, we would had we could still use this till the uh, percent till the dpo zero, but we would have to do a backslash files. But now we will keep we will save the script in the same location at Firefox setup. So this looks pretty good actually. I'll save this, save as, and let's go to our folder on the root on C, Intune, Mozilla Firefox, and the source folder. And we don't want it as a TXT, we want it as a CMD. I actually go to all types, and then we will name this one. Let's name this one install dash Mozilla Firefox, then the version 92x. 64 oops 64 dot cmd so now we get some extra um, uh, formatting let me go out a bit so we see the whole script something like that it's on the full screen so again i repeat myself the Quotation, we have only to remove the space. Even if there was no space, you can always put the double quotation. That's totally fine. Then we do percentage till the DPO zero. That's just for the path. So if this file, which we now see, is in this location, it will always translate to that. So if you have a server location, backslash, backslash, server, backslash, uh, SMB share, it will take that as well. Then we have the file itself. And then we have a forward slash s for silent installation. I don't want any desktop uh, shortcut and I definitely don't want any reboot. So we have a working installation here. Hopefully we'll test it. What more? We usually want to have some configuration as well. Let's look into that. So to configure a Mozilla Firefox, you can create a Mozilla.cfg file. I already have one that I have on my desktop and I'm going to put the content of that in the um, description of this video. So you can just copy that, create a file called Mozilla.cfg and paste it there. So I have it on my desktop. I'm going to do a copy of this one, Mozilla.cfg. Let's copy that one. And we want all the files in the source folder. You can create subfolder there, but I'm fine to have all on the root. So here we have the Mozilla.cfg. So you can right click, new, text document, for example, and just put Mozilla.cfg. It can actually be called anything, but that's a good practice, Mozilla.cfg. I will delete this one since I copied one. And then you fill it. I will open it with Notepad++ with these lines here. So actually the third one, let's skip that. We will do two settings. We will set the home page and set the um, search engine to Google Chrome. So in Mozilla CFG, like we did rem in the CM, uh, CMD, you can put two forward slash. That's just a comment. So this won't be um, read at all. The only thing that will be read is line four and seven, where we set the first setting, which is the home page, default pref. Default pref means that the user can actually go in and change. If you don't want them to change, you can put lock pref, then it's locked. But I put it so user can change it. So I will give a start page to uh, gbn.prints. Dot cloud. So we will see that when we start the web browser. If the setting took, we will see that as a start page. And then we will change the search engine to google.com by setting browser.search default engine name to https colon forward slash forward slash www.google.com. So that's just that file. And this you find in the description of this uh, video. So you can copy this line. And there are thousands of other settings that you can Google and find and tweak. This was just two basic settings. But this file alone, we can't just copy that in into Mozilla Firefox. We need a second file that Mozilla will uh, Firefox will read and that points to this file. And that file is also on the desktop and that's called autoconfig.js, which is a JavaScript file. So I'm going to copy that as well and put into the source.
And same, the content of this one is only two lines and that will also be in the description of this video. So if we look at autoconfig.js, we add it here, then we have uh, the second line is the interesting one. This one points to which config file to read, mozilla.cfg, the one we just had before. So this one is just pointing to that. Where should it read the config? What's the file name? And we could, we could of course, put uh, any name here, gbn.cfg, and then rename uh, this one as gbn.cfg. But best practice is to keep it mozilla.cfg. So now we have the files in the source. Let's go back to our installation script and then do a copy of these files. So let's see where should these uh, files be copied. And we can find that on the net. And I'll do this way that I rename this one, but I don't actually rename. Control A, Control C, copy this name, and then just search on location Firefox autoconfig. So it should be under default prefs, under C program files, Mozilla, and Firefox, and then default prefs. Okay, perfect. Let's start with that then. So we go back to our script, our installation script, and then we can do another comment here. And you see now Notepad++, since we saved that CMD, have formatted, so all comments are green. Let's uh, copy in two config files for settings. So let's start to copy in the autoconfig.js file. So we do copy, and then we can steal this one, present tilde dpu0, since we know that the config file will be in the same folder as the script, so same logic, this one here, is in the same as the cmd that we edit now, so it will find it. So we want to copy this, oh, sorry, we want to copy the autoconfig.js file. Where should we copy it to? Well, we can already do, um, double quotation here because we know it's going to be a space because it's going to be in uh, program files or we could use also something called percent program files percent but I, I will do the full path here program files so this is after firefox have been installed before that this uh, don't exist and then it's mozilla firefox and then as is written here defaults pref defaults pref so we want it in this folder and we can do a forward slash a capital y to if it's already exists the file overwrite it so i'll make this one bigger see if we can see it all yes we can perfect now we will do the same with mozilla.cfg but that one will not be under defaults pref. It will be under directly under Firefox. So I will actually copy this whole line. That looks a lot easier than to type it again. And this time we want to copy from the source folder mozilla.cfg, which have our two lines to set our homepage and our search to Google. So instead of autoconfig.js, we put mozilla.cfg and the location will be here instead. So now it starts to look pretty good. Usually when I test the script, I add a pause at the end because if you get any errors, you can pick them up. You could do the script better. Let's do that to check that this location exists before, but it's not the must because we can exist. So we can do if exist, and then we can copy this location copy. So it first look, does this uh, folder exist? Then do whatever is written here. If it doesn't, it won't do anything because if not, it will throw an error. And we could do the same here. If exist, and if I can spell if, and we take this one as well. 
not the most, but I like to do that. So if this folder exists, then copy. Because if this installation fail, which <laughs> then we have a bigger problem, then this folder won't be created and th then these lines will fail. Very important to not have the pause here uh, when you go production, but just now for testing. So let's see if this is working. So I'll save this script. I'll just verify I don't have any Firefox already installed. I don't. Okay, there is no Firefox. So in order to install, we can, and now we're not installing with Intune. We're just testing locally if it's working and then we will upload to Intune later in another video coming. Let's just right click and we want to run as an administrator. So I will shift right click here and then run as administrator. And we have added a post. That means it's going to, we're going to see what the outcome is here. So we elevate. So we are running our lines here. You see that the, the percentage tilde DPO zero have been um, translated to this path here. So if we put it under here, so we see all the rem, it totally ignore that. And then here on line six, it's this line here. Whatever we have written here, percentage tilde DPO zero have been uh, translated to this path here. If we move all this file to another folder, that would uh, totally work as well. It looks like it worked. So first of all, let's see if we can start fire Firefox is there. And how do we know that our settings are working? Well, if we see the start page is uh, GBN, uh, dot brints dot cloud then it works and there is no page there so it's not going to load anything so it's opening not now let's see if i have to open a new tab maybe the settings didn't take then we take a look at that um i don't see the home okay let's troubleshoot that probably something uh, I'll just start it one more time and see. Oh yeah, we have to remove the pause now because it looks like it worked. It's possible that this folder doesn't exist and we have to create it. So let's look here. If we go C, Program Files, Mozilla Firefox is one word. So here I have done a mistake. Mozilla Firefox defaults okay so the if exist ran and then said this don't exist then it didn't do the other part so an error from my side but we can easily correct that so let's do this let's do this here so now we have mozilla firefox just verify that again program files we are in program files Mozilla Firefox. Why well, I don't see that? There I see it. Defaults is there and prefs is there, but we can see there is a channel prefs, but it's not our file. Our auto config GS is not here. Let's rerun this script. Since we don't want to install it now, I will just temporarily remove uh, IRM out this so it won't try to install it again because just loss of time. So let's run it again. I keep that one open in order that we should see the file copy in and we run our CMD file which is under underscore Intune Mozilla Firefox folder source and here we have our installation file. So I right click again you don't need to shift right click and run as administrator and it should run pretty quick. I remove the pause so it's just gonna flash. It ran but it again didn't do uh, what I wanted. So what we do now is that this if exist, I still like it, but let's drop that. So we rem this and we rem this and I'll add a pause. So we capture if there's an er are any errors. Uh, program file, what? You see the what I did? I didn't save it. I thought I save it. Okay, now it should work. So I'll open up this pref again. And 
let's run. This video start to be a bit long, bear with me, we are soon finished with this part. So let's run as administrator. And we have a post now, so we should see if something... It says one file copy, one file copy, perfect. So that means we should see it now, and there is autoconfig. So I'll start Firefox and we will see if it works now. So it have always installed and yes, here is the start page. So it is working. We'll just clean this script up a bit. I'll remove the pause. I do like the rem if not I like the if exists, so we'll keep that. And we need a space here. Let's see if we can see the whole script. If I zoom the right way. Well, it becomes a bit small now. So, a quick recap. We added some metadata for our future selves or for others. And, very important, we want the installer when we run it the first time. So we are installing Firefox. We put the forward slash capital S for silent. We added a switch to not have any shortcut on the desktop. We prevent reboot. Then we copy in two uh, settings, the autoconfig GS, which just pointing and say, hey, use the this name, which is mozilla.cfg. Mozilla.cfg that we have is setting two settings, the start page and the search. And we copy in those into the after the installation have happened. Perfect. Great. Thank you very much for following this far. In next video, we will create an uninstall script. Well done.